Now we'll demonstrate the patient assessment skill. We'll start with the scene size up, scene safety. This will include your personal protective equipment, gloves, goggles, mask, gown if necessary. Environmental hazards, number of patients that you have, evaluate the mechanism of injury, any need for additional resources, and any need for extrication. In this case, we have a single patient, no need for extrication or additional resources at this point. We're going to make a general impression to the, of the patient and evaluate AVPU. Are they alert? Are they alert to verbal? Hey, hey, can you respond? Uh, are they too painful stimuli? Or they're unresponsive? And in this case, they are simply unresponsive. We'll start with the airway. We're going to do a modified jaw thrust to maintain axial stabilization and I'll assign my partner to maintain axial stabilization the entire time of the skill until I tell them to complete it. The airway is open, it is clear and patent, there is nothing in the airway, and we're evaluating if they're breathing. Yes, the patient is breathing, and we'll evaluate if they have a pulse, uh, carotid, brachial, or radial, whatever is appropriate. At this point, we've determined the priority of the patient, this patient is unresponsive, so they are a high priority. We need additional resources such as uh, ALS care. We're going to do a rapid head-to-toe assessment uh, and uh, get them to the hospital as quick as possible. I'm going to assign my partner to get a complete set of vitals. This would include a pulse rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, pupils, and skin signs. At that point, I've completed my primary survey and I can move to the head-to-toe focused history physical exam. What I'm going to do is start at the head and I'm going to feel uh, for the head. DCAP, BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasions, burns, swelling, lacerations, tenderness. I'm going to evaluate the entire back of the head, uh, the top of the head. I'm going to check the eyebrows. I'm going to open up the eyes. Although my partner has checked for pupillary response, I'm going to check the sclera, the conjunctiva, and for any um, uh, foreign body such as contact lens or um, prosthetics such as a uh, uh, fake eye. I'll evaluate the bridge of the nose, make sure that it's intact. I'll look inside the nose to ensure there's no blood or CSF fluid. I'll now evaluate the back of the ears, uh, checking for any battle signs, any blood or fluid coming out of the ears, any CSF. I'll evaluate the zygomatic arch, the mandible, maxilla, and I'm going to again look in the mouth to make sure there's no broken teeth or any obvious blood in the airway. Uh, at that point, I'm going to move to the neck. I'm going to check for any step-offs, any deformities, contusions, abrasions, uh, swelling, tenderness, lacerations. I'm going to check for a trachea to make sure that it is in line. Uh, there is no tracheal tug, tracheal shift, uh, jugular vein distension, accessory muscle use, sub-Q emphysema, stoma, or medical alert tag. At this point, I'll move to the shoulders. I'll do offset pressure, one side and then the other. I'll do moderate pressure to see if there's a response, then the other side, and I'll palpate for, def uh, again, DCAP BTLS. I'll do one side, then the other. I'm looking for a symmetrical look to the chest, no obvious injuries. As we evaluate the patient, we will strip off the clothing uh, to ensure that we can auscultate, visualize, and palpate everything. In this case, we won't remove the clothing for the um, purpose of the video uh, to protect the patient's modesty. Again, we'll palpate, offset pressure, we're checking for symmetry. We'll do a barrel hoop, anterior-posterior pressure, medial lateral pressure, paradoxal motion, flail segments, any impaled objects, any obvious uh, wounds that we see. At that point, we've completed the chest. We'll move to the belly. We'll use um, pressure to press and evaluate. We're checking for um, any pinpoint pain, rebound pain, referred pain, distension, swelling, any obvious uh, injuries or impaled objects that we find across the belly. Um, any rigidity associated with uh, bleeding within the belly. Then we move to the pelvis. We'll do anterior posterior pressure, medial lateral pressure. That's known as the barrel hoop, the pelvic girdle to see if that is intact. We move to the uh, genital area, 
make sure that there's no obvious uh, any uh, wounds to the genitalia, uh, any obvious vaginal bleeding, rectal bleeding, um, any uh, injury to the um, male genitalia itself. We'll do offset pressure on the femurs as we move down the leg. We'll get to the patella, make sure that it's intact. In the legs, the decap BTLS applies. We'll again do offset pressure all the way down. Move to the other leg, offset pressure, decap BTLS, check to make sure the patella's in place, and offset pressure all the way down. We'll come to the feet. We'll remove the shoes. Uh, in doing so, um, we're going to check for distal function, pulse, sensation, and movement. You have the option to pull the toe of the sock up and cut it and pull it up, or you can move it uh, all the way off depending on the types of injuries that you find. Uh, at this point, we've removed the sock, so we're going to check for pedal pulses to make sure that they're present and equal. We'll check, uh, in this case, the patient is unresponsive, so we'll use the Babinski to check to make sure that they have movement. Uh, that also creates sensation because they responded to it. Distal function is complete in the lower extremities. Now we come up to the upper extremities, offset pressure, decap, ETLS in the arms. We're also checking for shunts. Uh, any uh, track marks, any obvious um, uh, injury to the arms itself, uh, and again the same thing with the hands. Offset pressure, decap, VTLS all the way down. Then at this point we will compare the radial pulses to make sure that they're present and equal. There is no sensation and movement in the upper extremities because we did so in the lower extremities. At this point I'm going to need minimum three people. My person at the head that's still maintaining axial stabilization, I'll need a person at the chest, one at the pelvis, and one at the lower extremities. For this purpose, I will just simply demonstrate how we're going to log roll the patient. We'll move the arm in the upward direction, or you can tuck it in tight to the um, chest wall. At this point, uh, everybody will get into place, and we'll turn the patient toward me on the count of three. This is known as a log roll. One, two, and three. Everybody moves at the same time and now we'll do the posterior check. Back of the head, make sure that the spine is in line, no obvious impaled objects, any decap ETLS to the back, any injuries to the buttocks, uh, rectal bleeding, and any injuries that we may have missed on the back of the legs. At that point, uh, we'll go ahead and auscultate lung sounds while we're here in this position. We have completed uh, the posterior area. Now we'll put a backboard in place uh, and then we'll on three roll the patient one, two, three back onto the board. Now uh, we're continuing to maintain axial stabilization and at this point we will secure the patient to the board. We'll secure the head, we'll secure the chest, the pelvis, and the lower extremities. The backboard is a splint so we'll again need to check distal function once we've moved them. Now at this point, we'll be transporting the patient to the hospital, so we need to continue to reassess vital signs. In this case, the patient is a um, uh, significant injury or an immediate uh, priority, so we need to update vitals every five minutes. I'll have my partner do so, and we'll indicate we want a blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory count, pupils, and skin signs. Uh, in addition, if the patient was able to talk to me, in this case they cannot, but if they could, we would do the sample history. Uh, at that point, uh, we would just document that information and pass it on to the definitive care providers. That is the completion of the patient assessment head to toe. As you find a problem, you either document it or address it depending on what the problem is.